Good morning, Wham! Get the message. Alright, so we're going to read uh, Getting the Message and by Nancy Jo Hereford. And we're going to start with Voices for Justice. This will fit right in with civil rights. It also has a section about a uh, woman's right to vote. So this will be a really cool um, uh, article to read, a story to read, uh, before we watch some videos and learn about civil rights and how um, the Jim Crow laws were overturned and segregation was overturned. And then we'll learn about women's rights and uh, other rights like Hispanic rights, um, gay and lesbian rights, a lot of different things. So, America keeps fighting for progress. And uh, that's a good thing. So, I know yesterday we had the bad stuff, the Jim Crow, how segregation was. And here, we're going to learn about how that was overturned. So, good news today. And, you know, and even though it was overturned legally, there's still some, still some uh, work to do. As we learned uh, last year, the Black Lives Matter movement and uh, the, the murder, we can call it a murder of George Floyd because it's a convicted murder. Um, it's no longer alleged. So we can say that. Uh, all right, so let's uh, look for Voices of Justice by Nancy Jo Harrow. Our world is filled with different forms of media. There are printed materials and photographs. There's television and the Internet. Together, they help us have fun and learn. They help us communicate with others. People have also used media in, other, in, in another way. Think about it. Where would America be without documents about liberty? How do photos tell stories about human rights? How do television images help to fight injustice? How has social media become a force for freedom? Discover how media, in one form or another form, has always been a voice for justice. Media. Printed pamphlet. Common sense sparks independence. And we've learned all about this already, so this will just be kind of a review for this, which is great. Let's start with the American Revolution. Patriots gave public speeches. They also spread ideas by printing them in pamphlets. Pamphlet is like a short book. The most famous pamphlet is Common Sense by Thomas Paine. It appeared in January 1776. That was seven months before the Declaration of Independence. Paine explained why it made sense for America to become independent. He blamed the English king for treating the colonies unfairly. More than 100,000 copies of Common Sense were printed. Many colonists read Paine's idea. It's a big leap to imagine creating your own country. Common sense helped many colonists to make that leap. So, poli political pamphlets like Common Sense are a voice for justice. They gave America's good re Americans good reasons to fight for independence. Media. Abolitionist newspapers. The American Revolution was a success. The United States became independent, but there was not freedom for all. Slavery was still allowed in the new nation. Slowly the states in the north did away with slavery. Then the movement began to abolish or end enslavement everywhere in the country. Some leaders of the anti-slavery movement created newspapers. They printed articles about the cruel treatment of enslaved people. They wrote about why slavery was wrong. The Liberator was one of the best-known abolitionist newspapers. Its founder was William Lloyd Garrison. He published his newspaper for 34 years. He only stopped when the 13th Amendment ended slavery in 1865. So newspapers were a voice for justice. Over many years, they kept the goal of freedom for enslaved people in the public eye. They helped bring about a United States where there is liberty for all races. A 
Oh, but can you go back? So uh, just on the other page, there you can see uh, Thomas Paine, uh, Frederick Douglass, and William Lloyd Garrison. Okay, now media photographs. Woman on the March. This photograph shows the start of the 1913 March in Washington, D.C. More than 5,000 women joined the parade. Let's return to America's beginning. There are many well-known founding fathers, but there are hardly any famous founding mothers. Why? The Constitution did not give women the right to vote. In that time, women did not have the same rights as men. In the 1800s, women started to demand suffrage or voting rights. It took 72 years for women to win the right to vote. During those years, camera technology improved. By the late 1800s, photos could be printed in newspapers. Also, women wanted to get more attention for voting rights. Newspaper photos helped women get attention for their cause. They protested in city streets. They marched outside the White House. Photographers captured those events for the newspapers. The most famous suffrage march took place in Washington, D.C. in 1913. A crowd of men tried to stop the march. Women were injured. Photos of the march changed some people's minds. They began to help the women. So photos were a voice for justice. Those photos helped women show they wanted a say in government. In 1920, the 19th Amendment gave all women the right to vote. Media, television. Justice in the Living Room, the Civil Rights Movement. It may seem like television has been around forever, but it's not even 100 years old. People began buying televisions around 1950. By 1960, 90% of homes had a TV. It was a new experience to get the news on television. People could see national events in their own living rooms. Starting in the mid-1950s, television news reported on African Americans protesting for civil rights. Some scenes are inspiring, such as hundreds of peaceful marches gathering together. Many other scenes were ugly and violent. Viewers saw white adults screaming at black children trying to attend all-white schools. They saw helpless protesters being attacked. Remember the newspapers that told people about the evils of slavery? Television did something similar. It showed injustices that black Americans lived with. So television news about civil rights was a voice for justice. Television helped turn public opinion in favor of new laws in the 1960s. Those laws gave equal rights to people of all races. And as many people watched Dr. Martin Luther King Jr.'s speeches on television. Another thing they showed on TV, and I, I don't know why it's, it's kind of hinting at it only, they showed police and other officers chasing African Americans and women and men with dogs, attacking them, beating them, pushing them around with fire hoses. It was really embarrassing, and the whole world saw that. It was embarrassing for America. It's, it's funny. Embarrassing for America is terrible, right? It's even worse because it's so disgusting for all those. I mean, the, being embarrassing is the least problem to that. Uh, it really showed the other Americans how badly they were being treated down south. Mm -hmm. All right, so let's keep going. Media documentary, Changing Public Opinion. Some news programs, like the Evening News, report information. Another kind of news program called a documentary has a different goal. It documents or tells about a subject, but it shows real events in a way that supports a particular point of view. It also tries to make viewers care about that subject, often it uncovers a hidden injustice. One television documentary made history. That was, it was broadcast the day after Thanksgiving in 1960. By then, most families had a television, Views of the documentary called Harvest of Shame learned how migrant workers and learned about migrant workers in Florida. Migrant workers go from farm to farm picking crops. 
The documentary showed that these workers were treated unfairly. They barely made, made enough money to live. Harvest of shame of some, many viewers. They demanded help for these farm laborers. In 1962, Congress passed a law to give migrant workers services such as health care. So, a documentary is another voice for justice. A good documentary makes people think even better. It prompts them to take action. Now and in the future. Fast forward to today. People still learn about problems from printed materials and photos. Television and documentaries are still weapons that fight injustice. What other types of media can you name? Keep your eyes and ears open for new kinds of media that are a voice for justice. And as you know, the internet has become the new one, which will uh, you learn about tomorrow, some of the examples of that. But even in um, the recent election, uh, both recent elections, some bad things happened. Uh, there were lies spread, false reports. Even Russia, another government, fed Americans false reports to help someone get elected. We have uh, false reports of how the recent election was uh, cheated, which didn't happen. We have no proof of that. Uh, so they're still promoting some lies sometimes, which is sad. So that's the double-edged swords of news. You're going to pay attention to make sure you're getting the facts right. All right. So let's learn more about civil rights and uh, some good news. We're going to change the world. It's your job. We're done. I'm an old guy. I can't do anything. It's your job to change the world. All right. Bye.